Hello, dear fellow gentle marketer. Happy 2020. I'm so excited to start this new decade and uh, be in your company. Um, I think it really is going to be a good year. Uh, I hear that everywhere. Uh, it says so in my astrology chart and I can feel it. So I'm excited for 2020. Welcome to season three, episode 18 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm. I'm Sarah Zanacroce, I'm the host here, and if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found your way here. I uh, hope you'll find a lot of value in, in this show. And if you're a loyal listener, uh, welcome back. So glad to have you again. You know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business or you are an entrepreneur or intrapreneur who is tired of the traditional marketing model and are ready for a paradigm shift. Since we're at the beginning of a new year and a new decade, let me quickly remind you how we roll here at the Gentle Business Revolution show. The podcast is organized by seasons, and each season has about eight to nine episodes. Seven of those are organized around the seven Ps of gentle marketing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can download your one-page marketing plan that goes over all these seven Ps, and they're different from the traditional seven Ps, at sarazanacroce.com forward slash one, the number one, page. I feature a mix of solo and interview episodes. The solo episodes are what I call muse episodes. They are raw, no bells and whistles, just me riffing on a topic and breaking all the podcasting rules by not having a fancy intro or any editing. And for the inter interviews, though, I play by the rules, and these episodes are edited by Tim and my podcast editor and his team. At the end of each season, I share a behind-the-book episode. This is new this year. Actually, I started uh, last year, and the last episode was... Uh, the first of, of this series, the behind the book, because I'm currently working on a book with the title right now is The Gentle Business Revolution. So that's the working title. So that being said, let's get into today's episode. Today, I want to talk about the Japanese concept called Ikigai. And I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. So that fits into the first P that stands for passion of the gentle marketing revolution uh, mandala. On my quest to find my why, which I talk about in episode two, I stumbled on this term ikigai. It's Japanese for purpose and the term is composed of two Japanese words, iki meaning life and gai which means the realization of what one expects and hopes for. The Japanese believe that exploring your ikigai is integral to leading a fulfilling and wholehearted life. Ikigai gives people a reason to enjoy life and a reason to get up in the morning. This reason is intrinsic, and so it's not linked to external circumstances. Even if the present is dark and tragic, uh, you know, it's like raining outside, right? like right now as I'm recording this interview, sorry, this episode, as long as you have a reason for being, you will survive. I recently reread Viktor Frankl's Me Man's Search for Meaning, where he shares how he survived Auschwitz, and there are definitely a lot of similarities between his approach and Ikigai. One of Fr uh, Frankl's quotes says, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So that's really what Ikigai is. It's like, where can I find peace within myself in order to basically be happy no matter what, right? So there's no external um, circumstances um, that necessarily impact your ikigai. So how do we discover our ikigai? We start with the ikigai purpose model and if you google that you'll find it. It's a visual with four colorful circles uh, basically and one of the circles stands for what you're good at, so your strengths and skills and talents. One of the circles stands for what you love, 
passions, loves, where you lose track of all time. Another circle stands for what the world needs. So making a difference, serving others, healing humanity, regenerating the planet, environment, all these things. And the last circle stands for what you can be paid for. So that's a job or a task performed for money. And the purpose then is found at the intersection of those four circles. If one of the circles is missing, we're not feeling whole. For example, if we're in a really well-paid job, but we don't feel like we're doing what the world needs, then we lack meaning and all the money does not make us happy. On the opposite extreme, if we're making a difference, but we're not making money, we're still out of balance. We, we need money to survive. So the exercise really consists of listing the answers to these four questions. So, you know, what are you good at? What do you love? What does the world need? And what can you pay, be paid for? With the goal to find something that is found at the intersection. So again, this is something that will take some time and the goal isn't necessarily to find your icky guy, uh, you know, right now or, or, or this month or even in 2020. It, it just starts with paying attention to it and, and it starts with awareness and it starts with rumbling, maybe going back to your childhood and figuring out what you liked doing when you were seven years old. Um, I recently heard this podcast where someone shared that they have a picture of themselves when they were seven years old up in their office. And um, it reminded them who they were at the age of seven, what they loved. And and so I thought that was really powerful because it it helps you go back in time and realize, hmm, uh, this is who I was before I was influenced by others uh, and before I started thinking that, you know, I should be a certain way. So I think it's it's a powerful exercise to find a picture of yourself and, you know, re- really figure out what you liked doing then. So what you were enjoying, but also what, maybe already what you were good at then. According to Dan Buettner, author of Blue Zones, Lessons on Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest, the concept of ikigai is not exclusive to Japanese. There might not be a word for it, but in all four Blue Zones, so Blue Zones are these countries that he uh, recognized as being zones, areas, geographical areas where people live a long and happy life. So one of them is Sardinia, another one is Nicoya Peninsula. The same concept exists uh, amongst people living long lives. So some of you know that one of my happy places is in Sicily where we have a house And I definitely think that this idea of blue zones also applies to Sicilians. And it's probably one of the reasons why I like it so much down there. So isn't it interesting that having purpose and meaning might actually prolong your life? And isn't that alone worth investigating about your ikigai? There are a few books that might help you on this uh, quest and research. So... The ones that I mentioned on this episode the, are Ikigai by Hector Garcia, Blue Zones, Lessons on Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest by Dan Buettner, uh, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, and another book that uh, helped me with this concept is The Purpose Project by Carolyn Tate. And uh, yeah, of course, we're also talking about meaning, purpose, and passion in the first model of the Gentle Marketing Revolution program. That's why the first P stands for passion. And the new life program starts on January 28th, so in just a few weeks. And I'd love for you, obviously, to check out all the details at thegentlemarketingrevolution.com to see if it's a good fit for you. Another option for you to find out more about this topic in my work is to join us for a free five-day gentle marketing intensive that I'm hosting and it starts January 13th. So just next week, besides a daily email prompt, we'll also meet for three live workshops via Zoom. The topics of these workshops are the following. 
the, the one page marketing plan. So that's where we go over the seven P's of gentle marketing, the cause of marketing anxiety and the cure. And then the last one is uh, about the creative process. So marketing is a creative process. And these workshops are live on Zoom. We really make also space for the human connection. So it's not just a webinar. And I would love to get to meet you during these five days. You can find out more and sign up at bit.ly.com forward slash gentle marketing intensive. This is a free five day um, intensive. That's it for this episode of the Gentle Business Revolution. Please find the show notes with all these links to all these amazing books uh, at sarasanacroce.com forward slash GBR18. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you'll join me on this journey to a kinder marketing paradigm. Please invite your friends to join us by sharing this podcast or the Gentle Business Manifesto uh, with them. Both can be found at thegentlebusinessrevolution.com. Next week, I'm talking to Katie Rizul, and we're taking a deep dive into our definition of success and how maybe it's not the same than the mainstream definition of success. Let's be the change we want to see in the world. I can't wait to uh, speak to you again next week. Take care.